Hi everyone, today we're going to look at chapter 10, strategic management. Chapter 10 is actually in part one of the book and it's in section four. So let's just quickly recap what the other sections of part one were about. So we started in section one looking at classical management and really we were exploring what management theory is all about. And we came to the conclusion that from the perspective of the classical management scholars of the first quarter of the 20th century it was all about productivity efficiency and really the work itself and organizing that work in section two we then complemented this with an alternative perspective which focused much more on people and relationships but together both of those perspectives the human relations school and the classical management school were still really about work then later around about the mid 20th century we looked at section three of the book which focused on systems theories and contingency theories. And this was really about the way that you manage depends on the situation. And this moved us on from our sort of perspectives, our, our earlier perspectives, uh, to one that recognizes the need to align with the environment. This then logically led to further developments in management theory. And what happened was as we moved towards the end of the 20th century, there was much greater change in the external environment and managers realized that part of their job was to make sure the organization was aligned with the needs of the environment. And this was much more about effectiveness. So whereas earlier thoughts on management were about doing things right, were about efficiency, then the new schools of thinking were more about doing the right thing, which was much more about being effective. And this came about towards the end of the 20th century, but certainly in the fourth quarter, starting to find its way a little bit in the third quarter. It built upon the previous thinking and we'll explore it in a little bit more detail over the next few slides. So if we look at the learning outcomes for this chapter, it really is just an introductory chapter. So we're not getting too heavy on strategic management. Just want to make you aware of some of the concepts and its main purpose. But in part one of the book, it's really more about understanding its contribution to our general feeling of what management's all about. And in many ways, because it's about the effectiveness agenda, it's also tightly related to earlier chapters on leadership from the HR school, which also focused on the direction of the company. So we'll look at uh, the meaning of strategy and strategic management in the chapter. You'll look at the role, also the different perspectives on strategy. And we'll look at some generic strategies, which are really about getting things like cost advantage, differentiation and other things. And we'll look at sources of those advantages and how the concept of advantage evolved towards the end of the 20th century to a concern with sustainable competitive advantages. But as with previous chapters, uh, it's best if you've read the chapter before you watch this presentation and complete any of the activities associated with it. In previous chapters, we have discussed the meaning of management and how these theories evolved throughout the 20th century. We also recognise planning to be a key aspect of management, and this was introduced during the first quarter of the 20th century through classical management. In the latter part of the 20th century, much more attention was given to this aspect of management. Planning can be performed at many managerial levels, and around the mid-20th century focus turned to planning at the senior management level, which became policy. Later, this became strategy, and whereas much of the 20th century focused on operations management, increased competition, along with other changes in the environment, necessitated a focus on strategy and the alignment of the organisation with the environment. Contingency theory discussed previously paved the way for much of this thinking. In chapter 10, you'll be introduced to various aspects of strategy, the concepts and how they evolved. You'll also consider levels of strategy and different perspectives on it. Let's start with the historic view where we will discuss the evolution of management thinking from a strategic perspective. 
We will then go on to consider various branches of strategy and strategic management before a more detailed look at various perspectives. Bear in mind that this chapter is merely an introduction to the concept of strategic management and that it will be followed by a chapter on international strategy and three more chapters in part two of the book. As is noted in the vignette on page 126, strategic management is a relatively new concept in management theory. If you create a Google Books n-gram for the terms strategic management, competitive advantage and sustainable competitive advantage, you can see that they are relatively new terms emerging in the latter part of the 20th century. As we saw from classical management in particular, much of the earlier part of the 20th century was about operations and efficiency within the organisation. In the latter part of the 20th century, environments became much more turbulent and a key resulting challenge for organisations was to ensure that they were doing the right thing. Thus it was no longer sufficient to merely focus on efficiency and more attention had to be focused on effectiveness. Organisations also had to seek out opportunity and in many cases faced increased competition, particularly due to globalisation and improvements in communication technologies. Contingency theories developed in the third quarter established the need for organisations to align themselves with their environment. Management theory about strategy evolved considerably throughout the 1970s and 1980s. During this period we came across many different definitions of what strategy means and outlined some of the ideas as branches of strategy and strategic management. Earlier thoughts focused on planning and policy at the whole organisational level. But it was the development of contingency theory in the third quarter that paved the way for developments which emphasised the role of the environment as a context for strategy. At first, strategies focus on challenges from the external environment and recognise the need to compete. Thus, competitive advantage featured heavily in the strategy literature. Various generic sources of advantage such as cost and differentiation were considered. The cost advantage built on much earlier managerial work about efficiency, which could then allow an organisation to either increase its profit margin or pass on benefits to customers through a reduction in price. Differentiation advantages often involved offering more of the, to the product, which might mean improved service, additional features or functions and more. Ultimately, the strategies focus on ways to make the customer see your product as different and more aligned with their needs. Ultimately, these generic advantages were about increasing value. Positioning strategies are about the organisation aligning its environment and finding a means to increase profit. A positioning strategy is when a company chooses one or two important key areas to concentrate on and excels in those areas. The organisation's strategy focuses on how it will compete in the market. An effective positioning strategy considers the strengths and weaknesses of the organisation, the needs of the customers and market, and the position of competitors. The purpose of a positioning strategy is to find specific areas where they can outdo and beat their competition, and this perspective dominated thinking in the 1980s. In the 1990s, strategists came to realise that many competitive advantages could simply be replicated and copied by rivals, and so they had a limited shelf life. 
They therefore turned to sustainable advantages, trying to find things that they could do that competitors could not easily imitate. Thus their advantages would last for longer periods. A focus on internal aspects of the organisation, things like knowledge management culture and things like that, are difficult to imitate and were therefore seen as a source of sustainable advantage. Work in this area became classified as the resource base view of strategy. And this was about the organisation's capabilities and competencies as a whole. Whereas external perspectives may focus on opportunity and threat, the internal perspective seeks to understand organisational strengths and weaknesses. Also around this time, there was increased attention to the organisational performance, drawing on work from the HR school in particular. People were seen as a source of strategic advantage in the 1990s, and the role of the mission, vision, goals and values in directing and engaging the workforce was recognised. Also in the 1990s, time was recognised. Getting products and services to customers quickly became a key source of advantage. However, in many ways, this can be considered a special form of differentiation. Thus, strategy and strategic management can be seen in many different ways as the branches and streams developed in the fourth quarter of the 20th century. During the latter part of the 20th century, different levels of strategy were distinguished. Corporate level strategy is concerned with the overall purpose and scope of an organisation. Business or competitive strategy focuses on how the organisation competes. Then, just as the whole organisation requires a long-term plan, so do each of its parts generally the business functions, such as marketing, HR, or IT, for example. Generally, these different levels of strategy should be aligned with each other. Two of the main perspectives on strategy were based on context, either internal or external, which we identified earlier when we looked at branches of strategy. They are, in many ways, united through the SWOT framework, which we will outline next. Attention to organisation strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and threats faced in the marketplace started in the 1960s and continued to develop throughout the 20th century. Organisation strengths are used to exploit opportunities in the marketplace. Different industries may be more or less attractive depending on the forces operating within them. And as was discussed earlier, strategy is used to enable the organisation to align itself with the needs and challenges of the environment. We have identified and outlined various concepts associated with strategy and briefly discussed their evolution in this session, which summarises much of the content of Chapter 10. Strategy focuses on the future of the organisation and it is the long-term direction. In subsequent chapters we will consider some of these issues in more detail, looking at how strategy is created, implemented and managed. For now, it's important to consider its role in shaping our view of what management means and considering how it has contributed to management theory. Generally, whereas earlier theories focused on operations and efficiency, strategy considered the organisation within its environment and the need to align the two. Thus it focused on effectiveness. Effectiveness and efficiency are both essential to the organisation. So many different aspects of strategy and strategic management were highlighted in the animated video there and you'll have come across lots of different concepts and terms having read chapter 10. Probably a good idea at this point maybe to reread the vignette on page 125. Just pause the video and if you know anybody else who's reading the book at the moment or studying the course then perhaps you could discuss early thoughts with them and try to come to some agreement about the meaning of strategy and strategic management and talk about how different terms have evolved throughout time. And of course, there are lots of other ideas about strategic management that weren't mentioned in this outline, but will be covered later in the book. So pause the video now, have a think and chat about the vignette before we finish the presentation. So uh, as with the previous chapters, there's plenty of questions for you to attempt at the end of the book.
and I strongly suggest that you have a go at those. And again, if time is tight, just create an essay plan for some of them. If you have more time, then you could have a go at creating a more detailed essay itself. Remembering to use it as a means to practice academic writing, also presenting different arguments and supporting your arguments with wider theory. Again, you could perhaps show your drafts to peers and exchange thoughts and ideas and listen to their critical evaluations. Uh, alternatively, it may be an opportunity to discuss it in class from a formative perspective. One or two multiple choice questions, having read the chapter then. When did strategic management enter the management literature? Which decade? Have a little look at the answers A, B, C or D. Which one do you think? Pretty much around the 1960s. Second question, who concluded we could not rely on a single definition of strategy? Was it Taylor, Mayo, Mintzberg, Kuntz, Katz, Kahn, A, B, C, D, E or F? Have a think. Selected an answer. The correct answer was Mintzberg, option C. If you got either of those two wrong, then maybe you could go back and have another look through the chapter. So we've come to the end of this brief presentation. I really wanted to just outline thoughts for now. And really what we're looking at was strategy and focusing on the future of the organisation is really about the long term direction. And there are lots of different ways of interpreting what that means. And we have seen various perspectives and ideas emerge in that fourth quarter of the 20th century, which really builds upon early thoughts where it was really much more about company wide decision making. But then it became much more about aligning the organisation with the environment. We shifted from a focus in the 80s, perhaps on competitive advantage and the external environment to the 1990s, where we thought a little bit more about the internal environment, the resources of the organisation, but also thought about sustainable competitive advantage and things like time compression came into the strategic field. But that's pretty much it for now. Have another read and watch through the presentation if you need to go over anything again. But bye for now.